What's up, guys? We're Jungle Beats, Australia's plug to the worst concert reviews in the country. <laughs> and my man, Alexander Mann over here, was lucky enough to get a ticket to Brockhampton from... Uh, Don McQuarrie, Shout out to Dom, man. Thank you very much, man. So much appreciation and love for you, man. I'll put up your tweets on the screen, but um, he DM he tweeted us, what, just a couple of days before the show. Mm -hmm. He asked if we were coming. The one fucking time an artist gives us free tickets to a show, I'm out of the country. The one fucking time they acknowledge our existence. But that's okay, man. Tell us how it was. Do you remember the concert? Yes. <laughs> Did you go? Yes, I went. <laughs> Well, first of all, I did try and get tickets, but they'd sold out in like within a few days. Yeah. Which I is... think I tried to get them on like the third or fourth day. Yeah. Well, so the fun. fact that I got that ticket was super pleasing and humbling and I'm, it was fucking sick. So I got there about, probably about just, probably just after the first maybe act ended because it's probably about half an hour before they got on. So like 8.30ish. And I remember getting there, I remember passing by there the day before and it was like early in the morning. And there was like already like people lined up there. So people were already lining up there like 24 hours before. It's a small right? venue, right? Mm, it's not that small. It's a couple thousand. Yeah, I think. But the, it's by the sound of the, how packed it was, it sounds like they could sell out a ten to 20,000 yeah, arena. Yeah, they could easily, man. Their, their, their fan base, especially like, honestly, if it was under 18, it would have been even fucking huge. Because a lot of their fan base is under 18. The fact, True. I reckon there were probably a lot of underage people there. I reckon people would have easily got fake IDs for that. 100%. I definitely think so, so. There's people camping in overnight, which often doesn't even happen for the big artists. Mm -hmm. You get an hour before, it's packed. Yeah. And uh, the crowd was like super youthful, super energized. And um, it was really interesting because they just released Iridescent. And I was thinking, are they, because they've just released this, because they've just released this album, are they going to do that? Because a lot of the fans, oh, yeah. a lot of the fans, because this was like a week after they've released it. Yeah. I was like, a lot of the fans probably don't haven't even listened to that. Or a lot of the people that have gone to this probably only know them for their saturation stuff. I was like, what will they perform? And they performed, honestly, probably half the songs they did were from the new album. Really? I think they were excited. And I, honestly, the, the thing that I... Wow, well, I'll start with the concert. So I, I really enjoyed the performance. Their energy was amazing. Um, although Kevin Abstract was quite funny because he just kept trying to get the crowd really involved. Like, yo, how you doing? Or get your hands up, hands up, open it up, open it up. Like, that's legit what he said the whole concert. Like he was a hype man? In a way, yeah. Like, because cause you remember also on, on Iridescent, like he, I think he kind of steps back a little bit. Like he yeah. doesn't do as much as he's used to. Yeah. I actually saw this really interesting uh, pie charts of each album of who had the most to do with it. And this one was like the less in a way. And it's interesting, like you kind of think like with Amir Van gone, who fills in all his parts? Because he had a lot of parts of the album. And it's funny, Bareface stepped up and Bareface has taken huge more amounts on mm -hmm. this album. And they did a lot of stuff from their, obviously from their saturation periods. And I think they did one track from uh, the, the first album. They, I think the best track was probably, I really enjoyed Boogie. Because it just really got the crowd going. It's also got that hype, high energy. And it's one of the tracks that I didn't initially like a lot more than the other tracks. Zipper was really good too. Uh, a lot of the newer tracks were performing really well, like Weight, uh, Fabric, which is really dope. Tonya was really good live. And they, they kind of had the different aesthetic spots. So with Tonya, they all sat down and faced away from the audience and Ooh, did their thing. Really? Uh, one of the funny things, funny thing was, was the visuals. Like they got the visuals for some of the, like for some of the video clips on there to match it, but it was slightly off. Oh, really? Yeah. So kind of like just those little things, man. Yeah. That kind of put, put. Puts a dampen on the experience. Mm. But um, the crowd was super involved. I mean, it was funny because every time they, they kind of like open the pit, open the pit, let's get it going. Like a lot of people I saw stepped away from there and like, people were getting close to the stage because a lot of the fan base of Rockhampton, they feel aren't that type of crowd. Like huge. I just saw lots of people just like go further away every time they open it up. And sure, people were in the pit and like having fun, but like not a lot of, like not as much as you normally do. Like Denzel Curry concerts, a lot of other concerts go on to, like people get fucking into it. I got into it because that's how the music makes me feel. Rockhampton. Doesn't make me want to fucking get in the pit. Denzel Curry makes me want to get in the pit. They're completely different feelings. Um, but the energy, the energy on stage was really good. Merlin Wood was amazing. Don McLennan was amazing. Uh, Joba was probably probably the best, I'd say, honestly, in my opinion. Because just, just the way that like he did it was like very so picture perfect to how he did it on the album too. Like, you know the verse that he has on um, uh, Javert? The one where he's screaming? 
Continue. He does it like so fucking well, man. So you're saying his live performances and studio performances are almost identical. Mm-hmm. Like it's just that's just how good his voice that's control really is. That's really great. Respect. Um, Matt Champion, I honestly felt like was probably the... <coughs> I've said it with the album. It's probably one of the weaker parts of the album. I feel like that he isn't as strong as he has been on his previous albums. And with his live performance, like he's still good live. It's just because a lot of his verses on Iridescence are very lackluster. He kind of still has that sort of haziness on stage. Okay. So I felt like he probably could have stepped it up a bit. But that's honestly because that's just how he depicted it on the album. So it's hard for him to do it in a different light. Kevin was amazing. I really wish you guys did Junkie, but it's all good. They did Sweet, of course. Did you Gold? They did Gold. What was the track that the crowd got most excited to hear once that beat dropped? That would have been... Or oh, one of them. Bleach would have been one. Oh, it was really cool because they got Kevin got the crowd singing the hook like dun, 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 dun. I don't know the words, mm. but he get he get tell me why he got them like singing it over and over and over and same with Tonya like it was really interesting because the the second to last track on Iridescence as well like they just kept getting people to repeat the hook and it seemed like Brockhampton were really involving seeing a whole crowd of people sing their new songs mm. and sing them so like loud and and well. But um, so this is this is the good like the performance is amazing. It was a great concert. I really enjoyed myself. They they're great performers. They have great energy on stage. But there was no talk, no talk, no engagement with <laughs> no engagement whatsoever with the audience. And I think I know why. I think Brockhampton was so excited to be performing their new con- content for the second time because New Zealand there at first. I think they were so excited to be like fuck man, we've never performed our new music before. And I think that was just so. Because if they'd performed a lot beforehand, they'd be performing a lot of the same. Imagine performing the same songs over and over again for a certain amount of time and having these new songs you can finally perform and they're just so different to your previous work. Mm. So, because I kept seeing like towards the end there, Kevin just like looking to like the, either the manager or the promoter of the venue and be like, like, come on, what? like he just wanted to keep performing songs. So I'm pretty sure that he was just like to Brock Abbott, like, look man, let's not engage with the audience too much tonight because we just want to perform as much as possible. Right. So they would have done a lot of tracks then, I assume. They did a lot of tracks. Wow. I think like, even when they did their encore, they did like three, four tracks. Um, but I, but that's, but I honestly would have rather not heard those three to four tracks because I love having, having engagements, and especially when like with Brock Hampton, you have so many different personalities, and they all have a mic. Like they can. So what were you expecting? What would you have preferred in that time? Like them just talking about their day, their experience on the tour, them like so great to be in Melbourne. But what, what, what did you want to hear? experiences on the tour would be great but also the fact that they're performing all these new tracks that we've, that we've only just started to hear from them I want to hear how they've got these tracks together and what this track means to them like they just ah, they just, okay. they just perform them I feel like it's a little <coughs> backstory to each track or every couple tracks yeah I honestly feel like that with um, like say with their first their first few albums they would have probably done that but the more you perform that the less you want to do that because you're sick of explaining it mm. but these ones they've never explained before mm. so I would have loved them to be like yo this track's like say weight or fabric and this is how this came together blah blah, blah. like it'd be interesting to know the, the story behind that I think that definitely a lot of people are going to feel that but a lot of people uh, probably like me really enjoy how each track goes into one another and how there's no break and it's just straight music the whole time and uh, like as getting as much in as possible I feel like you can find a balance for sure but I feel like it's going to be both sides are going to enjoy each element. I don't know. I kind of like a little bit that banter in between as well. Like I wanted that aspect, but I also wanted the banter because they're also known to be very fun people. Right. And there was none of that in between just like... That's a great point. There was none of that in between just like bickering and sort of laughing between each other. It was just track to track. So as much as I enjoyed the performance and the way they did their tracks and the hype that the crowd brought, like the crowd was very hype besides the pit. (laughs) So your criticism main would be then that uh, engagement in between tracks? Yeah. What? I just heard a sound. <laughs> Is there any other uh, constructive criticism you would have for their next tour? Um, yeah, I think maybe read off the orders a bit. I think that once you realize the pit wasn't really working, people weren't getting involved at all, don't worry about that, man. Let the crowd be as the crowd wants to be. Like, don't try and force them to be something. I think that's enough. I think that's why. I think, I, I honestly don't have, I think that like they perform perfectly. I think next time you come, you could do the exact same thing because I feel like a lot of people loved it, but I feel like engagement with the audience as well is a big thing. Like, especially with tracks like Tonya, man. I mean, maybe you were still feeling a lot of hurt towards some of the things that have happened already or feeling like maybe the travel. I I don't know what goes through your head. Either way, besides that, like I said, I had had a really fun time. Continue.
or finish up whatever you want to do. I can't remember what I was saying. I'm sorry. Well, we're forgetting the name of that other guy. Um, but you, tried, <laughs> you tried to wait outside, you said. Oh, yeah, that's what I was going to say. The next day they released a video. Like, exactly the next day. And it was on Russell Street. Yes. And they it's did funny. One, I noticed that spot. How cool is that, right? Really fucking cool. And then they cool. did one in Sydney, in the Sydney tour. Mm-hmm. So, I love that idea, guys. I think that was fantastic. I want to know if, like, did you just find those people randomly on the street? And it's like, yo, want to do this video with us? And they didn't even know who you were? Or did you, I like... I singing, singing the lyrics. Yeah, or did you secretly like reach out and get some fans to come down and perform? Maybe, who knows? I really hope you got randoms, and I really hope those randoms had no idea who you are, because that'd be fucking amazing. <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. Uh, what was your favorite part of the concert? The influence they've had and the crowd's reaction to it. Mm. So looking around, because I mean a lot of hip-hop concerts, and normally there's a big sort of age difference between a lot of people. Like obviously it's younger, but there's always like those sort of difference of like what people wear, the way people act. The crowd was just so young and accepting it was just like a, a new movement a new like because you know how like a lot of this new age people in music it's all about like really accepting others for who they are or also like usually like against violence especially to do with like like that sort of crowd mentality because a lot of hip-hop mentality is to do with like um kind of like you know being more like Rrr. yeah masculinity grit in a way yeah so it was really interesting to see like a whole crowd where there was just none of that because normally there's a bit of that but there's just none of it, it was just all love, man. That's great. So you felt that energy from the crowd. Felt that energy from the crowd and from Brockhampton. That's amazing. And I think it's a step in that direction of like, this is where we're trying to push hip hop and our music. That's a testament to them as a group. Mm. They created that through their music and through their how they act and what they stand for. <sighs> well, so this might be a good time as well to talk about iridescence because no one knows how you feel on it. We can, we can yeah, add this. It would be a good time. Still digesting it. I've heard it about Four, three to five times in total. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's their best album for me, but I do see a unique overlay that like something's different. Mm -hmm. Like it's not like saturation. It has a unique element to it that I appreciate. I'm still finding my footing with it, but I really like how Joba, um, Dom and Merlin and Bareface are having more bigger parts in it. True, because Matt Champion and Kevin Astro, you could say, were the biggest parts of the first two albums. Right. And another thing is that I noticed the uh, vocal uh, manipulation is, it's a bit different too. It's a bit more matured, a bit more sophisticated. It's a bit less chipmunky and a little more uh, refined. Mm. And I like that. So I'll leave it there. It's a good album. It is a good album. I think it's their best album. Okay. Because, I, yeah, I remember. I saw your review. Mm -hmm. I watched your review. <laughs> you, watched, you watched Jungle Beats review. I watched the Jungle Beats But it wasn't in. See, Wait. I'm still finding my footing with that. I'm, I don't know yet. I think we're different people. Are we? <laughs> or are we one symbiont being? We are when we're inside each other. We're Jungle Beats. <laughs> Australia's plug to the hottest interracial couple in the country. If you want to watch our video, go to pornhub.com forward slash Jungle Beats. And make sure you subscribe. You'll find us there. Yep. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Tell me why. Tell me why.